Tonight on Beyond the District, we see a terrifying moment caught on live television and a disaster that could have injured hundreds of people. Beyond the District will return in two minutes. How far would you go to help someone? Would you go to the end of your driveway? Would you cross a street? Would you cross an ocean? Would you go if you could use your knowledge to teach someone? And in the process, maybe learn something yourself. Life is calling. How far will you go? Peace Corps. You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you will join us And the world will be as I'm Chris Ortiz and welcome to Tom's River Schools Beyond the District. And I'm Alyssa Servo. Later on tonight we will see how famous television icon celebrating 35 years. But at first tonight we take a look at a dramatic rescue in the Sacramento area after a series of crashes sent a moving truck over a guardrail trapping the driver inside the burning vehicle. Kristen Simoes has the details. It was a complicated rescue with no time to waste. Over the span of six minutes, what started as a minor collision led to four vehicles crashing. One of them, a budget moving truck, flew over the edge of the Yolo Causeway, landed 35 feet below, and caught fire. First engine company got a hose line from up here, kept the fire in check. We could see the driver was still alive, and uh, then we had to do the rescue operation to get him out of there. That rescue took close to an hour and included dozens of firefighters from West Sacramento and Davis. The driver was conscious but trapped in the cab, and the biggest challenge was access. Can't get there really by the roads with the fire engine, so we had to do all of our operations from up here on top of the roadway. So it was a big challenge. We had to do some things real quickly. Including getting that injured driver back up to the roadway where medics were waiting. Highway patrol officers tell us crashes on the causeway are notoriously bad. There's not much in the way of a uh, shoulder or center median, so there's nowhere for people to go um, if there happens to be a crash. So it's uh, very difficult if uh, people aren't aware of what's going on around them. In this case, the initial crash involved two dark cars and happened just before dawn, which meant oncoming drivers likely couldn't see the vehicles involved. As for the cause... There doesn't appear to be any alcohol or drugs that were involved, uh, just a matter of... Uh, speed and inattention. Up next in Davenport, Iowa, Modern Woodman Park's Ferris wheel was no competition for dangerous high winds. The ride closed for the season, but was hard wind gusts by Monday. The ride appeared to be in full swing. Ryan Boson reports. 
Cell phone video shows a wild ride Friday for the Ferris wheel at Modern Woodman Park. The gondola is swinging at the mercy of strong winds gusting up to 60 miles per hour. I mean, obviously it's a concern, but um, you know, I, th I think it looked like they got a solid crew over there working on it. Today, the winds have died down, but the damage remains. We have the, uh, the manufacturer that rides actually out here now taking a look at things and patching everything up and trying to figure out exactly, you know, the best way to move forward to uh, prevent, uh, you know, any winds from, from doing anything again. More than a handful of the ride's 20 gondolas were damaged and one car had to be removed. We had one that, that, was, that was pretty close to coming off. Um, that was the one we decided to take down as a precautionary measure. Today, inspectors are checking the wheel for any mechanical issues. So far, they found mostly scrapes, some broken plexiglass, and other cosmetic damage. So we got plenty of time to, uh, you know, make sure everything's up and running. And, uh, you know, when the inspector comes out from the state of Idaho to take a look at it, you know, he'll be able to see a perfect uh, and beautiful gondola. Now, Jean Moose is celebrating a huge career milestone. 35 years at CNN. Her stories have run the gamut, but it's her creative way of telling them that we love the most. Here's a look through the years. We have seen today the demonstration spreading into the streets of Beijing. It is not just here in Tiananmen Square. Ginny Moose has won many awards for reporting the last 35 years. In human terms, the UN is approaching middle age. One gentleman called CNN's New York bureau after we first aired the story. But our viewers grew to love her for finding the most unusual twist to everything. Behold the bunless wonder. Ready? Ready. Let's go. He does weigh a ton. Yes, you really a ton. Go. Making a remote-controlled pizza rat isn't exactly rocket science. Jeannie's love of animals is no secret. Have you ever committed adultery? But at times, some of the animals didn't return the love. She seems to like to be mocked. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> While some reporters pull out all the stops, Jeannie pulls out sharp objects. No, 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 I don't want to. Oh, oh, oh. You didn't want to, but you did a great job. Over the years, Jeannie has done thousands of so-called man-on-the-street interviews. You are the world's most famous streetwalker. And has allowed her creativity to run wild. What do you think of this look? And after 35 years, Jeannie still finds that surprisingly funny take, even in politics. Like the Donald Trump coloring book. Donald arm wrestling Hillary. Donald as a beetle? I never thought I'd be coloring Donald Trump's fig leaf. To his hats. That's a great hat. Is it? Yeah. I think the hat is smoking, you know what I'm saying? To even his hair. The treatment Donald Trump is getting is beyond catty. Actually, it's called Trump Your Cat, giving your feline the Donald hairline. Jeannie, we want more. And happy 35th anniversary. Happy birthday, silly putty. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Next, the word hero can sometimes be used a little too often. However, that seems like the only way to describe the group of rescuers in New Hampshire after they saved a woman trapped in rushing river in the middle of a dark night. Jean Mackin reports. It was a desperate race against time to reach a woman washing down the Merrimack River. Right there. Right there. Right there. The first challenge spot her in the frigid, fast-moving water. You can hear rescuers urge her to grab hold of a rope. Firefighters lowered ropes and a ladder for her to hold on to, buying an extra minute for the rescue boat to arrive. She was dressed in some dark clothes. So, and of course, the water's dark and, it, and it's nighttime, and trying to find her we're looking for something that's bouncing in the waves can make it make it quite difficult. She lost her grip once, floating away from first responders. She reached out and grabbed the wall. That's when the boat came to the rescue with no time to spare. Firefighters pulled her to safety and sped away. We ended up losing the ladder and her. Uh, Fortunately, by that time, the boat had made it up here, and we picked her off at the stairs. Probably had another two minutes. She's hypothermic now, and she probably wouldn't have been able to hang on much longer. Firefighters carried the woman up the steps at Arms Park to get into a warm ambulance. Firefighters, paramedics, and police officers say they worked as a team to pull off this rescue, something they trained for all year long. Yeah, we do, but uh, it's uh, the real thing's a little more dramatic than, uh, than we'd like. Proud of you guys? Very proud. 
Now we are going to take a short break, but coming up, take a look at the set of twins who have a lot to be thankful for. And we also take a look at a sport that is catching on with the seniors. And by seniors, I mean those over 55. Do you have ID? Yep. Oh, okay, thanks. Welcome back. Patience has paid off for a set of twins in California. In California, they've been playing scratch-off lottery tickets for years without winning. But this month, they hit the big jackpot. Kate Colgan reports. It's a one in three million chance. And these San Ramon twins beat the odds. You just never know it's going to be you, like especially something that like big something big that started with something little earlier this month i looked up at my at my windshield and i saw a uh, a yellow ladybug lisa toten took the yellow ladybug as a sign so she made a pit stop here at fast and easy mart to pick up some lottery tickets i'm gonna get one of these because i know there's including two set for life scratchers for her and her twin laura poorman the twins have been buying tickets together since they were 18 carefully following their mother's advice is to find a place with a light out. Mom's advice paid off. Lisa says she was parked at her son's school when she found out they won six million dollars. And I'm like, oh my God. And I was like hyperventilating. Like I was like Kim Kardashian ugly crying. First thing Lisa did, call Laura. I was on a conference call on a video call at work and she kept calling and calling and calling. But Laura didn't pick up. So Lisa had to deliver the news via text message. Come home now, scratch your jackpot. And I kind of said, huh? And then I said, six million, I'm shaking. And that's kind of when she got my attention. <laughs> this is Lisa and Laura claiming their prize at Hayward's California Lottery East Bay District Office. I don't even know if it's still sunk in yet because it's so ridiculous. Yeah, I'm going to get number two. There's a couple left. I know that for sure. I don't think their newfound millionaire status will change the two. You think like angels are going to be singing and all this cool stuff's going to happen and we went to Fuddruckers and we bought about 20 pairs of socks. That's been our splurge so far. Up next, the Olympics of Senior Curling are underway in Wauwatosa and it's attracted people from nearly a dozen states. A 12 News Mike Anderson reports, if you're a grown up looking to stay active, this might be a winter sport for you. The sport of curling doesn't come to mind as readily as some other winter activities, but for people who know it and play it, it's just what the doctor ordered. Wait, wait! Especially if you're a senior, say between 58 and 80 something. They all call me dad. And, um, but I have a lot of fun and known a lot of people uh, throughout the years. Dave Nelson is 82, and he's one of the competitors this weekend at the U.S. Senior Men's National Curling Championship in Wauwatosa. I got other things I'm involved in with my grandchildren, but that's, but I'm always got time for curling. Nelson is from Michigan. There are more than 250 curlers here from 11 states, some older than him. Wonderful to have all these people come here, some as far away as Phoenix, Arizona, Orange County, California, Seattle, Washington, and in North Carolina. The game originated in Scotland back in the 1800s and is, as you might expect, most popular in cold weather areas. But they call it a sport for the ages, all ages. 
Though Dave Nelson is 82, he's not the oldest player in competition. That's an 88-year-old gentleman from Green Bay who was not here today. By the way, the object of this game is quite simple. The team that scores the most points wins. Now, if you can open a can of green beans, you typically expect to find green beans. But one woman in Utah claims she found a disgusting addition after starving green beans at a church function. Ashley Kush reports. Don't touch, it's very hot, okay? Troy Walker is an old pro in the kitchen. We're having turkey steaks and macaroni and cheese. She prefers cooking for her tiniest family members. And I love it because my grandkids think I'm a good cook. But it was at a church youth function where she almost served up something not on the menu. When I went to dish them out, I thought it was a burnt bean. <laughs> and lo and behold, it was a snake head. Yep, a snake head in the middle of all those beans. We just found the head, so we're like, oh, I wonder where the body is. We reached out to Western Family. They told KSL, foreign matter is not something we take lightly. We want to know what it is, and we will immediately research and do any level of correction we can. They're already gone from the shelves of several grocery stores in the area. We're going to be doing butter. Walker says oh, she's not butter. upset. That was my biggest concern that somebody would el else would get the body or something of the snake and not the snake head. She's already planning for her next dinner party. We're having a family dinner on Sunday. Nobody responded to my text. I said, I promise I'm not going to serve green beans. It is now time for another break. Coming up later in the show, we will take a look at how a hospital wing that has been named after a famous Hunger Games actress. Beyond the District, we'll be right back. to be different And you've been trying for so long to find out where your place is But in their narrow minds There's no room for anyone who dares to do something different Oh, but listen for a minute the one who's been where you are wishing all it was was sticks and stones those words cut deep but they don't mean you're all alone and you're not invisible hear me out there's so much more to life than what you're Welcome back to Beyond the District. I'm Chris Ortiz. A new wing of a children's hospital will bear the name of actress Jennifer Lawrence. The Hunger Games star donated $2 million to build an intensive care unit for young heart patients in Kentucky. Ann Bowden reports. My name is Martin Molin. I make music and I make machines that also make music. The machine is called Wintergatan Marble Machine. Wintergatan is my band and the marble machine is uh, my machine. Often the basic concept of a marble machine is that you lift marbles up and then you let them fall down in different nice ways. And then you lift them up. 
next with next with bass drums and vibraphone this is a music box like no other My name is Martin Molin. I make music and I make machines that also make music. The machine is called Wintergatan Marble Machine. Wintergatan is my band and the marble machine is uh, my machine. Often the basic concept of a marble machine is that you lift marbles up and then you let them fall down in different nice ways and then you lift them up again like a play with physics, I guess. There's 2,000 marbles in the machine and they make sound by falling on top of music instruments. And um, what I did with my marble machine is that I made it programmable so that I can control where and when marble falls. You have a kick drum, a snare drum, a hi-hat, and a sizzle cymbal, an electric bass, and also a vibraphone. And my favorite of these instruments is the vibraphone. When I was constructing this machine, I wanted it to, to sound like pounding and uh, like hard and be able to like play loud and play sound nice. That was part of the project. Actually, I wrote the song only for the machine first, you know, it was only for the video, but I am, uh, I am putting it out now as, as a normal song, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if the radio stations will pick up on it at all. That, that remains to be seen, I think. Now we check out a terrifying moment captured on live TV. A local news reporter in California was almost run over while doing a live report. He's okay, but is still shaken by what happened. Gene Moos, who is crediting with saving his life. Reporting can present dangers, whether from a tear gas canister or flying debris. Get back, get back. This is all coming apart. But what could happen in the parking lot of a Fremont, California 7-Eleven while reporting on a train derailment? And obviously it was a chaotic and confusing situation for... No one was hurt, but you can't blame KTVU's Alex Savage for his reaction. My heart is, uh, hasn't stopped racing. Since his back was to the traffic, Alex credits his cameraman for yelling, get out of the way, <laughs> before diving to safety. This is the man, that's Chip Vaughn. My, always has, always has my back. Turns out the elderly woman driving the white car turned right on red into the path of another car, got hit, then police say stepped on the gas instead of the brake. She missed me by about this much. Police took her license. Every time I see that video, it, 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 it freaks me out. This is the kind of thing that usually happens to police, not reporters, when officers are stopped on the side of the road. Everyone reacts differently to a close call. For instance, the cameraman's wife. She said, good, you, you'll be able to walk the dog when you get home. Oh. <laughs> In the business, this is known as a live hit, but Alex could have ended up dead from this hit. I, I just would like to thank Chip for Aww. these guys. Thanks, buddy. No, you're all right. Yeah. You're all right. Thanks. No, it's you're scary. Ginny Mo, CNN, New York. Navy reservists employed for the past 10 months surprised his two young children in Baltimore County, Maryland. Monday, Deborah Weiner was there for the big reveal. Sandy Plains Elementary School in Dundalk just may never be the same, thanks to Sean and Tanya Abshire. I encouraged Sean that we should do it because he's gone several times, but this was the first deployment where he was gone for 10 months and we had both kids in school now, so why not? Sean is a naval reservist who has returned home from a humanitarian mission in South Africa. His kids have been living in these special dog tags, trying to keep dad close to their hearts. So they don't know I'm coming home. They're, they're uh, waiting. They're doing countdown days 
But uh, I think that uh, we said it far enough that they have no clue that today will be the day. The Abshires, along with the principal, hatched a plan to turn the Monday afternoon assembly into the ultimate surprise party. The only concern, son Nathan, who is seven, doesn't always love a surprise. I'm hoping that he's open to it and I'm hoping that it, uh, that he likes it, you know. He, I'm hoping he's glad that his dad's home, you know. As time draws near, the principal escorts the Abshires backstage and the kids file in for what they are told will be a special presentation. Both Nathan and Haley have, you know, haven't seen their dad for close to a year and they come up and they talk about him all the time. So to be a part of that, it was, you know, easy guess. The principal chooses two volunteers. Yup, Nathan and his four-year-old sister Haley. And then it's game time. Remember, if you have a story you would like us to cover. Or if you have an announcement about an upcoming event, please send it to inner school mail to the TV studio at High School East. Or you can email us at tv21 at trschools.com. Also, be sure to tune in to TV21 throughout the day to catch up on this show and Times of Schools today as we bring you stories from all around the district. Also, please take a look at our website, www.trschools.com slash TV21. Well, that wraps up tonight's show. For Beyond the District, I'm Chris Ortiz. And I'm Alyssa Servo. Have a great night.